This is our second video on transparency in the coffee supply chain. In this episode, we're going to be looking at farmer price, what's really meant by that, what costs are involved in each individual case, and what in additional context you're going to need to be able to compare one farmer price to another. Continuing this conversation about transparency in the specialty coffee supply chain, in this video, we're going to focus on the term farmer price with the goal of ensuring comparability between one quoted farmer price and another quoted farmer price. Uh, if the idea is to make sure that the farmers are being treated fairly and, and earning a, uh, an income that one feels is sufficient, um, we're going to need to know what's meant by farmer price. For example, a farmer price could be at the farm gate which we discussed in our last video here. Uh, this could also be FOB. So if the actual farmer is in charge of this coffee until it's loaded onto a ship, or even, in, in even fewer cases, FOT, which is the case when the farmer, producer, is, or whatever company they own is actually in charge of carrying out the importing process into the consumption country and loading this onto a truck on its way to the roaster. So, uh, you know, if, if the idea is to put on your bag of roasted coffee, this is the farmer price. We want to make sure the farmer earned at least X. Um, you know, we can, we can do that, and farmer, for what the farmer is earning is, is quite important, but what is the farmer spending? Um, maybe not in... in, in in this context of this video, we're not going to get into what are they spending on picking, what are they spending on fertilizer, um, you know, how many plantains they're eating for lunch, whatever. Um, we're, we're talking more about the supply chain costs here. So if, if one, uh, one individual, one company says they're, they're paying farmers $2 per pound or 4.4 you know, euros per kilo, whatever it is, <clears throat> and then another one says, we're, well, we're actually paying our farmer, the farmer, because they're not property of anyone, uh, we're paying this farmer $7 per pound. Now, is this, is this supply chain in which the roaster pays the farmer $7 per pound better or more fair for the farmer than another supply chain where the farmer's earning $2? Now, it would sound that way, but maybe not necessarily. Uh, because in order to get to, from the farm gate to FOT, what did that farmer have to spend? So let's take a look at all the costs involved in the coffee supply chain um, to know what's meant by farmer price at farm gate versus FOB versus FOT. Because that $7 you'll see in a few minutes here may not even be uh, as attractive for the farmer, may not leave the farmer with... Uh, as much profit as $2 would have at the farm gate. Uh, so let's just take a look at what kind of costs are involved between farm gate and, and FOB, free on board, loaded onto the, the uh, vessel or, or uh, mode of transportation that will uh, take the coffee out of the, out of the production country. So we have transportation to the mill. So from the farm, uh, possibly to a, a small town somewhere, uh, near the farm, then to the, the mill and some other part of, of the country on its way to the port, financing, time to build the lot. So if this is a, a large farm, maybe one week's worth of picking will be a micro lot that they'll send to mill and then put on a plane to you, and it could be quite fast if this is a small farm. However, it might take uh, a month, two months, even three months uh, to put together a thousand, two thousand kilos of parchment, or something that's that's enough to mill. Uh, these costs and, and and all the rest, such as, as transportation, are going to be highly dependent on scale. So how much of it's being done? You're sending uh, 500 kilos on a consolidated truck or via courier service is going to be significantly more expensive per unit than sending a full truckload with 35 tons of parchment in it from a small town to a to a mill. Milling itself is another cost incurred by whoever is taking this from dry parchment to, 
to uh, export uncertain yield. We don't know how many kilos of parchment it's going to take to create one bag of clean export grade green coffee until we actually do it. We're going to try to take samples and, and give it our best guess, but um, one never can be totally certain. Quality control. All these little jobs in, imply costs. Infrastructure that one needs to maintain. Rent on a space to be able to do it. Packaging. The bag. Printing of the bag. How many colors do you need? Uh, grain Pro or other sort of bag liner that needs to be sourced, uh, transported, and, and paid for. Admin. So all the paperwork wrangling, uh, all the sourcing of, of different materials, the coordination of, of dry milling, um, bill of lading, um, invoice, packing list, all these documents need to be taken care of. Quality control, take, keeping track of samples, dispatching uh, pre-shipped samples, all this, transport, to the port, port costs, such as uh, freight brokerage, uh, customs brokerage, uh, all the movements within the port, container rental, etc. Export tax, which is supposedly not actually a tax, but it's something we have to pay in any case. Uh, and export company overhead. So all the costs of, of having someone do all these jobs, um, you know, rent on a facility you need to, to carry them out, all the fixed costs of, of uh, maintaining this operation in an export company, um, which can be quite significant depending on the, on the geography. Lastly, risk. The risk of anything going wrong at any point in this process, a trucker's strike, a port strike, a global pandemic that's going to shut down ports and make uh, courier transportation of pre-shipped samples impossible, shouldering the risk of, of any of these kind of things happening and, and all the costs that they may imply. So if your farmer price is actually an FOB price, it must be taken into account that the farmer is then going to have to pay for all the things mentioned here and probably some others that I've forgotten about. And their cost per unit is going to be highly dependent on how many units uh, they're processing and exporting. If this is a small farm sending you one micro lot and that's it, their cost of, of, of dealing with all that could be similar to a larger exporter that's going to be processing a full container or, or several full containers of a, of a homogenous product. Um, so it, it needs to be taken into account that whatever this, this FOB price is, um, you know, what did it cost the farmer to get from farm gate to FOB? And is that farmer better off for having sold for a higher absolute price FOB than if they had just sold it farm gate to a, a larger scaled operation? Uh, full disclosure, in, in our case, this entire process is normally costing us per pound about 27 to 30 cents, and depending on the exchange rate, because some of these, in our case in Colombia, is denominated in, in Colombian pesos, others are, are charged to us in US dollars. And then in the rare case that your farmer price is actually an FOT price in your own country, um, is going to imply a whole other set of costs including international freight. If they're using air freight versus sea freight, this could easily be many, many times more expensive. Uh, for example, uh, when we used to ship coffee from Colombia to the US by plane, uh, it would end up costing us about $1 per pound which is, is outrageous because by sea it's normally costing us, all said and done, about 12 cents per pound. Um, you know, every supply chain is different. What cost people are including in these is always going to be a little different. So 
please don't get offended if your cost is much lower, much higher than, than the experience I've had here. Uh, this is going to include customs brokerage in the import country, drayage, warehouse, in and out charges, warehousing, so the rent on the actual space that you're taking up in a warehouse or you know the rent on an actual warehouse if, if you have your own. Sampling, not cheap, especially when they're Grain Pro liners. Um, admin of you know, logistics, sampling, importing, all the, all the information that has to flow around in order to carry out this process. Someone has to do that. Someone either has to be paid to do that or is doing it instead of something else they could be getting paid for. So that's an important cost uh, to take into account no matter what scale and what you know, actual amount of hours are being dedicated to it. And import company overhead. Whatever fixed costs are involved in this, whatever or, uh, infrastructure and facilities are needed um, or costs that are being incurred by uh, whoever is handling this just for, for maintaining that entity that's doing it. So the, the last piece here is also timing, oh, sorry, risk as well of anything going wrong, uh, especially in the import process, anything's possible, as well as you know, financing this entire process. The, the export process might be one month, if this is a efficient scaled operation that's turning over coffee pretty fast, it might be three to four months, like it is in, in our case often. And, and uh, I mean, we're doing this on behalf of 150 farmers. So for one, it could be even longer than that if you have to actually wait to, to put together an entire harvest. And then on the import side as well, it could be one month. If this is uh, moving pretty quickly, it's going to a country not too far away and it's for immediate delivery. Or it could be much longer, say nine months. Or I mean, we've had cases when this has gone on for a year and a half, uh, especially when these coffees are being forward booked and drawn from uh, periodically by the roads that's using them. Somebody has to pay for the financing of all this. Uh, and if you're a small fish, especially based in uh, one of many coffee producing countries, your cost of capital is probably significantly higher than companies in the import countries and, and much, much higher than scaled multinational companies based in importing countries. So uh, quite a lot of different costs. And if someone's quoting you a, a farmer price and you want to be proud of that farmer price and, and you know, uh, find peace of mind in, in knowing that farmers are, are being taken care of and, and are getting a good deal, because they're earning X amount of money, find out what that actually means. What did the farmer actually have to do to get that much money? And um, you know, based on what you can find out there, just make uh, a judgment call. Uh, is the farmer's bottom line fair? Is the farmer's bottom line acceptable? Because you know that's what we're really interested in, not how much money they're moving around, but uh, whether they're earning what's fair for the work that they're doing, for the contribution that they're making, the value that they're adding, and that they're able to enjoy a standard of living that whatever buyer uh, considers acceptable. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed our second video on transparency in the coffee supply chain. As always, please leave any additional questions in the comments here. And go ahead and subscribe if you want to check out more content like this as it comes out. Thanks. For coffee sourced through said router from collective members, full transparency information is always available, including farm gate price, a breakdown of supply chain costs, as well as the raw data and the calculations we use to contextualize information for consumers. We don't source from farmers, rather our organization is made up of the actual farmers, so we have all of this data at our fingertips and we have no reason not to share it. If you're not familiar with our offerings, we operate vertical supply chains in collaboration with several partners to be able to distribute in North America, Australia, the UK, and Europe. Again, I'm Carl, Director of Cedro Alto. If you're a roaster interested in working with us, feel free to grab my email from the video description here 
or contact us via social media.